Today, we're looking at the first 10 things you should do if you've just got your brand new Apple Watch SE 2 uh, or any Apple Watch that runs the latest Watch OS 9. Now, to start, I'm going to show you guys how to customize your Apple Watch, uh, and then we're going to be looking at some of those essential settings to change. And then finally, we'll look at some of my favorite tips and tricks for the Apple Watch. And altogether, this is going to help you get the most out of your Apple Watch's features battery life as well as performance. As always guys, I will leave the purchase links down in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so first let's take a look at customizing the watch face. Probably the most important part uh, of any smartwatch, especially the Apple Watch, as Apple offers such a wide range of watch faces, allowing you to instantly change the look and feel of your watch. So to switch between your uh, already preset or already made watch faces, you can just swipe it from the left and right side of the display, and you wanna make sure you really get to the edge of the screen here, uh, and that will allow you to immediately change the entire look of your watch. Now to edit a watch face, what we're gonna do is press and hold on the watch face, and this will then bring up this secondary menu, uh, where again, we can swipe through the different watch faces, uh, but we also have this edit button here, and this will allow us to edit any existing watch faces that we have. And then if we swipe all the way to the right, we get this little new and plus button, and this will allow us to add a new watch face. So from here, we can scroll through the extensive list of watch faces uh, that the SE2 has. Uh, again, there's such a wide range to choose from here uh, for different use cases. Some are more minimal, uh, some will have more information. Uh, let's see here, one of my all-time favorites has to be the GMT watch face. So let's go ahead and press add, uh, and that will then allow us to add that watch face uh, and then customize it further. Now the layers of customization will be broken down into different sections, uh, and those will be shown up here. So first we can change the color, and then we can change the complications separately. Now, different watch faces will have more or less uh, layers of customization. Uh, but let's go ahead and go through these one by one uh, and show you what we can do. So first we can change the color of the watch face. Now, one of the great things about the GMT watch face, uh, as the name implies, it will allow you to actually show two time zones at once. So I actually like this first option. I like the, the red and blue here. Uh, so we'll save it at that. And then once we're happy, we're gonna swipe to the next page of customization. And in this case here, we can then set up the complications. Now, complications, if you don't know, are essentially uh, mini applications or widgets that will be running in the corners of your watch face. And this is a great way to get uh, a lot of information at a glance. So for example, things like your weather, uh, shortcuts to apps such as music, uh, as well as your activity rings, you can sort of uh, monitor these throughout the day. To customize a complication, we're just gonna tap on it here. So let's take this one in the top left here, uh, and then we can swipe through the extensive list uh, of complications to choose from. So again, we have uh, such a wide range of settings here. We can do shortcuts to apps. We can see uh, other numerical stats, like again, the weather, your temperature, humidity level, even your noise. Uh, let's see here, I believe I saw one for battery as well. That's always kind of useful to have. Uh, where is it? There it is, the battery. Uh, always useful to have the battery indicator on the top left there on the Apple Watch. Uh, and that will allow us to customize every corner here. We can just tap into it to customize it. Now on this particular watch face, we do also have a date window uh, and we can choose to turn that on or off. I like to have this on. Now, once we're happy with the watch face, simply press the digital crown once. And this will then, as you can see, allow us to tap into that new watch face that we just created uh, and customize with that new uh, with that new complication in the corner there. So we go ahead and tap that. As you can see, that will bring a overview of the battery life and allow us to quickly toggle the low power mode right from the watch face. And then here we can cycle through all of our other existing watch faces as well. This brings me to some of those essential settings to change for your Apple Watch. Now the Apple Watch has a pretty good settings app already. However, to access all of your Apple Watch settings, and in my opinion, a easier way to set up your Apple Watch uh, is to do this via your iPhone on the Watch app. Now this is an application that will come pre-installed uh, on any iPhone, so you should already have this. Uh, if you can't find it on your home screen, you can swipe down to Spotlight and then enter Watch to find the application. Uh, again, it is titled Watch and you'll find a little Apple watch in the icon. So once we open up the watch here, uh, the first thing we can do is also swipe through all of our available watch faces, much like we could on the watch. And then to change a watch face, simply press and hold. Uh, and then we have the option to set it as a watch face, immediately customize it, uh, and also remove it as well. Now to add a new watch face, we can press on the face gallery that you'll find here on the bottom. And this gives you a very uh, easy overview of all the different watch faces. And then of course, the variants of each. So we can just tap into one here 
uh, and then customize it just like we could on the Apple Watch. Uh, but again, I find it to be just a little bit more comfortable to do on the iPhone, uh, especially big difference comparing the uh, 40 millimeter SE to the 14 Pro Max, of course. But anyway, uh, let's get back to business here and look at some of those essential settings to change. Now, right off, we're gonna start off with notifications. That is the first setting here on the list. Now, if you've seen any of my other uh, Apple Watch content, you will know that I love receiving notifications right on the wrist using my Apple Watch. Uh, in fact, this is actually one of my favorite features of the Apple Watch. However, it is important to only receive useful notifications. Almost every app you have on your iPhone uh, will want to send you notifications at some point, whether it be shopping apps, food apps, uh, applications that really have no sense sending you notifications, uh, let alone bothering you throughout the day, taking you out of your current task. So what I highly recommend doing is to go through your list of applications and manually select and deselect which applications you want to allow or disallow to send you notifications. Trust me, this is not only good for your Apple Watch's battery life, as the less notifications you have coming in, uh, the more battery that will save, and it's also good for your well-being, as really, you only want to be notified of something on your Apple Watch if it's something important. So this way, whenever my wrist uh, goes off, when I feel that vibration of the Apple Watch, I know it is something useful, uh, and I will check out the notification. Uh, other notifications that are not time sensitive, I just let them come into my iPhone and just check them periodically, uh, and only allow those important notifications to reach my Apple Watch. And then next, if we swipe back to the main menu here, uh, we have the option for the app view. Now, as standard, we get a grid view, and that will basically show you what the home screen looks like on your Apple Watch. Now, I think the grid view is nice. Uh, it can be a little bit finicky. I think especially if you're looking for apps in the corner, they can be a little bit small and hard to find. So having an alphabetical list of applications may be easier. Uh, personally, however, I just have a few apps, maybe five or six that I often use on my Apple Watch, and I kind of uh, position those in the middle of my screen. Otherwise though, uh, a, list, a list can be useful if you uh, have many applications that you use and this is where you would change that. And you also have the option to manually arrange your applications here as well. So you can just go and drag, uh, drag and drop as you please. Uh, again, my recommendation is to put the more common apps in the middle as those will be uh, most prominently visible and easiest to find. And then we're gonna scroll down a bit and dive into general. Now first, uh, we go into software update and it is really important uh, to turn on automatic updates. I recommend this for the iPhone as well. Uh, new updates not only give new features, uh, it can also create improvements from bugs or software glitches, uh, and also importantly, will include software uh, security updates. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your Apple Watch is always up to date, uh, and by turning this on, means your watch will always be. Uh, and if there is a new update, it will actually update generally overnight whilst your watch is on charge, uh, so you're not bothered during the day. Uh, you just wake up and you'll get a notification saying that your watch is up to date. And then if we go back, uh, we scroll down to where it says watch orientation. Uh, kind of funny, I often get comments in the videos asking uh, whether I am or why I'm wearing the watch on my right wrist. Some people even think I'm wearing it incorrectly, uh, but I am in fact left-handed. So for me, it makes most sense to have the watch on my right wrist. Uh, and what I actually do is I turn the watch around as this way I can access the digital crown without covering the screen. As if I were to, oh, if I were to wear it like so, you'll see that if I were to want to reach the digital crown, I'd have to cover the display. It is much more reachable uh, like so. So if you are left-handed like me, uh, you can change the orientation of your watch right in the settings as well. And then when we go back here, we have the background app refresh. Now, I treat this similarly to the way I do notifications. I basically turn off any application that has no need to run in the background uh, and take battery life uh, without it needing to do so. So think applications uh, that you really don't use often. For example, sleep, I never wear my watch to sleep. Stocks, I don't use my watch to check that. News, same thing for that. Uh, other applications, camera, remote, these are things I don't use, so I turn them off. Now, you do have the option to turn off background app refresh for all applications, uh, but this is something I would not recommend, as there are certain applications that I think you would likely want to have running in the background, uh, things like your mail, things like your maps, activity, if you're doing a workout, music, uh, so some apps you would want up to date, uh, but I think that really is fewer uh, rather than more. So going through this list here and selecting which apps you will allow to run in the background uh, will help save battery. Uh, and I think overall just create a better experience for your Apple Watch. And then if we go back, we have the option to turn on 
where is it? There it is, bedside mode. Bedside mode, uh, if you don't know, is pretty cool. What it basically does is when the Apple Watch is on charge, uh, it will show you the time in the sort of green minimalistic view as well as your battery status. Uh, it can do so in landscape mode as well. Uh, I find this to be useful as when I check the time uh, at night, I like to be able to just tap the screen and see the time without seeing my notifications. Uh, again, this is a good way to just not get distracted from your sleep. Just look at the time, the, uh, the screen will be very dim and it will quickly turn off as well. And again, this will only activate uh, at night when your watch is charging and then automatically deactivate uh, throughout the day. So that's a feature I definitely suggest turning on. Uh, speaking of features I suggest turning on, there's also screenshots. So to take a screenshot on your Apple Watch, what you actually want to do here uh, is press the digital crown and the side button at once. Let me see if I can do that with one finger here. Ah, very impressive. So as you can see, the uh, screen just flashed. Do it one more time, there we go. Uh, and that screenshot is actually automatically gonna save on your iPhone, uh, and you can then find that in your photos library. And if we scroll down, we find the storage tab. Now, this is a good way to get an overview uh, of what's taking up storage on your Apple Watch. Uh, you can see I have quite a bit to spare, uh, but I'm very aware of how much music and photos I download to my watch, uh, as well as applications, as I find these are things that can take up uh, quite a bit of storage over time. So if you are running low, I definitely suggest checking out your music. Uh, and your photos as well as any third-party apps that you may have uh, and this here will give you a nice overview uh, of how much available storage you have and how that is distributed. Next there's a couple of things uh, that I want to show you in the display and brightness settings. Now normally speaking I suggest keeping your brightness at the midpoint uh, as I find this to be bright enough for most use cases. Uh, the auto brightness on the Apple Watch is actually really good where in bright environments it'll uh, turn up bright enough to a point where you can easily read it out in the sun uh, and then in dim environments say at night it'll be nice and dim uh, not waking up say your significant other in the room. So normally speaking uh, I keep it at the midpoint uh, however for my video I've turned it up now so you guys can see more clearly. Now beneath that we also have the option to change the text size for the display. Now this is something uh, that will of course come down to personal preference. Uh, I like to have mine just one click to the left of the uh, middle here meaning the text is just slightly smaller uh, and what that allows for is it allows me to get more lines of text on screen at a time. So here I've just pulled up a, a quick text message here on my Apple Watch uh, to give you just a quick live demo of what this means. So of course the larger the text uh, the more easy uh, the more easy to read your watch day, uh, display will be from a distance. However, uh, it also means you'll see less words on screen at a time and that means you'll have to scroll uh, more to read the entire message. Uh, oh, let me just go back here. Uh, so I, again, I find that perfect balance to be one click off to the left uh, where you can still read the message comfortably, uh, but you won't be scrolling constantly uh, to get that information through. So this is something, again, personal preference. Uh, I find this here to be the sweet spot. And if you're on the Apple Watch SE, uh, this means you will not have an always on display, in which case I definitely recommend turning on the wake display on the wrist raise. And what that basically means is it will detect when you uh, flick your wrist and it will then automatically wake the display to show you the time. I find the Apple Watch to do this really well. It won't accidentally trigger uh, and will usually trigger when you tilt your wrist, no matter how fast or slow you do so. Uh, so definitely suggest turning this on. Uh, and then as for wake duration, you can change, uh, choose to set this to 15 seconds or 70. Again, for the video, I have it set to 70. Normally speaking, 15 will be plenty. Uh, and again, will help you save some battery over time. Speaking of saving battery, uh, if we scroll back to where we see Siri, uh, one of the most important features, uh, I think, of the Apple Watch is Siri. Uh, again, not the best digital assistant in the world, I've said that before, uh, but it is still useful for smaller tasks, uh, setting a reminder, uh, asking for the weather, uh, the temperature, all these kind of things. But how you access Siri does matter, uh, as you do have the option to turn on Hey Siri. Uh, and this, of course, will mean that your Apple Watch is constantly listening for that activation phrase in the background. And what this means is it's going to take significant battery. Uh, not to mention, it is surprisingly easy to accidentally uh, trigger Siri through this. Uh, for example, if I say seriously, uh, I found that sometimes that can actually trigger my Siri uh, unexpectedly. And that's not something you want during meetings, for example. Uh, so generally speaking, I like to turn this off, especially uh, though to save battery. And I do the same thing for my iPhone. Uh, and instead, I use the digital crown to activate Siri. So what you do here, I'll just show you what that looks like. Simply press and hold the digital crown. As you can see, that will bring up Siri uh, and then allow us to uh, ask a question. And then if we go back to where it says sound and haptics, uh, you have the option to uh, change the volume here. So you can go ahead and swipe, uh, swipe between that and it will then give you a preview right on the Apple Watch to show you how loud or not loud that is. Uh, though normally speaking, I actually like to run my Apple Watch in silent mode as I find the haptic feedback, in other words, the vibration uh, that the watch gives off when you get a notification to be really accurate uh, and, and quite, uh, 
perfectly balanced between not being distracting uh, to a point where obviously no one else can hear it, but you still feel it. You're not going to miss that vibration. So again, when that important notification uh, comes through, you will know it's there. Uh, also in the settings, you can also change the, uh, the uh, strength of the haptic. So you can have it from default to prominent. Uh, prominent will probably take a little bit more battery. I think for most though, uh, including myself, default is enough. Uh, and again, this allows you to receive those notifications without disturbing anyone else as your watch will be in silent. Uh, and this I think is one of the great features uh, of the Apple Watch. And now let's go into the password settings here. Uh, something I really recommend you do is not use a password like 000, uh, as you see on my Apple Watch. Uh, a feature that I do like to turn on as well is the unlock with iPhone feature. Now, normally speaking, uh, first thing in the morning when you put on your Apple Watch, you'll have to type in your password uh, as you see here. But if say you put on your Apple Watch and you use uh, Face ID to unlock your iPhone, your iPhone will actually detect that you're wearing the watch as well and then will automatically unlock the Apple Watch, uh, meaning you won't have to type in the password uh, on your watch. This is a very simple and small uh, quality of life improvement, uh, but something I definitely suggest turning on. Um, even more important than that, I think, is the erase data option. Now, if you've seen any of my uh, iPhone guides or gu iPhone tutorial videos, you'll know that I always recommend turning this on for the iPhone, and the same is true for the Apple Watch. What this means is if ever your Apple Watch is lost or stolen, uh, chances are whoever uh, stole your watch is gonna try to brute force their way in by guessing your password. This way, however, if the password is incorrectly typed 10 times in a row, it will automatically erase the data uh, of your Apple Watch. Ultimately, your personal data is most important. Uh, the Apple Watch is gonna have your photos, messages, uh, calendar, things you do not want in the hands of strangers. Uh, so making sure that your data is safe at all times, even if your watch is stolen, uh, is very important. So definitely suggest turning this on. And then if we go into the emergency and SOS section, uh, I suggest turning on all of these settings as there's really no downside to them. Uh, I think the Apple Watch, especially the new SE2 and Series 8, come with some potentially life-saving uh, safety features, including crash detection, as well as fall detection. Now, turning these on meaning, uh, means that if ever your Apple Watch detects you're in a severe car crash or fall, and if you don't respond to a prompt on screen, it's actually gonna automatically call emergency services with your location uh, and also notify your emergency contacts. This has already saved lives. I've read articles on this. So it's just something that's reassuring to know uh, that it's in on the background. And then a useful tip uh, is to go to the activity settings. Now, the Apple Watch is a great tool to track your activity uh, and to sort of see your progress throughout the day. I especially like the activity rings. It kind of gamifies uh, the amount of movement you get, you know, seeing that ring gradually fill up throughout the day. Like for example, uh, if I notice that my ring is not entirely filled, like today, I'm gonna go for that extra evening walk just to get that green ring especially uh, all the way filled. However, there are some downsides to the activity app. Uh, I think it sends way too many notifications. Out of the box, this will all be on. Uh, my suggestion is to turn off all of these notifications, uh, except for the stand reminders. That one is actually kind of useful. I, I like this as someone who works uh, behind a computer most of the day uh, when I'm not filming. It's good to, to be reminded every hour or so to just move for a minute or two. Uh, as that is important, but other things like your daily coaching, goal completions, uh, these are nice, but honestly, after a while, they can get a little bit bothersome. Uh, I'd rather just look at the uh, activity ranks to, to see my progress and not be reminded so much throughout the day. Uh, so turning this off, uh, I think will be uh, best for most. And this brings us to the heart settings. Now the Apple Watch is a very accurate heart rate monitor uh, that will check and monitor your heart rate 24 seven, uh, basically whenever your watch is on uh, and has also been medically uh, proven or medically uh, accredited as well. So it is very accurate. Uh, and this is where you can change the uh, notifications as well. So you can have it notify you if you have a uh, exceptionally heart, a high or low heart rate, and you can set those parameters here. Uh, this is very useful, even as someone who doesn't have any heart issues. Uh, it is just, again, reassuring to know that this is being monitored uh, in some way with the Apple Watch, so that if ever there is something out of the norm, uh, you know you will know of it. Otherwise, these things can go undetected, uh, and this way your Apple Watch will notify you. Up next, I wanna show you some essential tips uh, and tricks for the Apple Watch. Uh, now, these are small quality of life improvements, uh, but these are things you'll probably end up using quite often uh, and are generally quite useful to know. Uh, so first, to access the multitasking menu, what you can do is press the side button here, uh, and that will then open up the app switcher, and this will show you all of your current open apps. We can then, of course, tap into an app to open it. So let's say we got the weather here. We can tap into that, uh, go back to the multitasking menu, and then tap into activity. Um, now, a really good way to quickly switch between two open apps is to actually double press the digital crown. So as you can see, we were just in weather, 
and then we can quickly switch between weather and the activity app without having to first go home or go to the multitasking menu uh, and click in the app. So I find this really a great way to quickly cycle uh, between your two most recent apps on the Apple Watch. Now to permanently close an app, or if say ever your app is glitching, uh, you just wanna close it, just swipe to the right, you'll see the X, tap that, and that will allow you to close the app. And then if we press and hold the side button, we'll get this secondary menu here, uh, which will allow us to also turn off the Apple Watch. If you press the power button here in the top right, we can swipe to the right here to power down the watch. Uh, and then to power it back on, simply press and hold the side button as well. Now in this menu, we also have the option to start an emergency call as well as show your medical ID. Now medical ID, if you don't know, is something you can set up on your iPhone. Uh, and this will allow you to share essential health information, such as your weights, your height, uh, blood type, or any uh, medical information that you want to share and then have it accessible to say uh, a medical professional in the event that that needs to be shown uh, without needing to unlock your watch. So I do recommend setting this up just in case uh, and this is how to access it on the Apple Watch. You'd simply swipe over and that information would display right on your wrist. All right, so those are the first things that I would recommend anyone who just got an Apple Watch to do, uh, from customizing the watch face to setting up those essential settings, and of course, those nice to know uh, tips and tricks. Overall, guys, I think this is gonna make your experience with the Apple Watch even better. Uh, if you want to learn even more about your Apple Watch, I have done a more extensive, thorough ultimate guide, uh, which I will also leave linked at the end of this video. If you guys have any tips or tricks that I did not share, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, and take care care.